Welcome to the Game Dev Pantry, a channel where we retro-engineer interesting or popular mechanics in the Unreal Engine. Hmm. Having X-Ray Vision is an interesting game mechanic. It suggests to the player that there are many more hidden secrets than they would have previously been led to believe, and it encourages them to look for every nook and cranny to locate those hidden gems. This particular bit of design is especially effective in games with persistent worlds or backtracking elements. The Metroid series has used this mechanic to great effect in many of its iterations. Today, however, we will focus on a similar effect achieved in another game. The Lens of Truth from Zelda Ocarina of Time. As one of Nintendo's iconic series, The Legend of Zelda has always had a focus on exploration, hiding stuff all around the world for the player to find and the sense of discovery associated with it. As the first 3D game in the series, Ocarina of Time had to overcome many challenges associated with this type of production. And as time would go on to tell, the developers overcame these challenges with massive success, and it became one of the most iconic Zelda games. Obtained in the 11th chapter of the game, Three quarters of the way in, the lens power-up allows Link to see through certain things, as well as seeing things that normally couldn't be seen. I see dead people. To replicate this effect in Unreal, we need to define a few things first. How to dictate what can be seen and what can't. How do we control the activation of the lens? And how did we manage to go this far in the video without making a food pun? We'll set up the project by using the third-person template. The third-person character will fit our needs perfectly and will save time to whip out a prototype. So let's start with the ability to reveal and hide objects. There are a few ways to do this. The method we will use will showcase the use of a material to generate a shape mask. In other words, we create a shape that either hides or shows the desired item using the material editor. To allow for better reusability, we will be making this behavior in a material function. The first thing we want to do is define what shape we want our mask to be, and how it will be represented mathematically. To make a lens, we want to define a cone-shaped mask. Note that we could have made a mask using a circle in screen space, but for the purpose of this video, we wanted to showcase shapes. Now, bear with us, because this part is going to get a bit technical. That's right, I'm about to monologue, son. You better make it quick, you only got eight minutes. The method we will use to generate a cone in this video is to project a growing circle starting from a single point and growing towards the sky. For every point in the z-axis, a circle exists that represents the bounds of the cone. So to check if a point in space is within the cone, we first check its location in the z-axis to define the radius of the bounding circle. Using basic Pythagorean math, we can find the radius of our circle. Then, to check if the point is within the circle, we check the length of its xy vector and assess if it is smaller than the radius of the circle. Finally, we need to floor and clamp our results so that we are only left with either 0 if it is within the cone, or 1 if it is out of the cone. And with this formula, voila! We have a cone that exists from point 00, zero and that grows towards the sky indefinitely. Of course, we actually want this cone to begin at our camera's location and expands towards where the camera's looking at. To set the starting position of the cone at the camera's location, we simply need to change our world space position from world space to camera relative. And to rotate our cone, we simply need to transform our vector from world space to view space. This node effectively changes the basis of the three components of our vector. While in the world space, Z was the world's up direction, X was the world's forward direction, and Y was the world's right. With our transformed vectors, Z is now the depth relative to the view, Y is now the up relative to the view, and X is the right relative to the view. This means that now, our cone is growing in the direction that we're looking, which sort of creates a lens. Now the reason why this all works involves a lot of math. The important part is that we now have a function that identifies which part of an object is within a cone given an angle. It is now important that this behavior is only active when the lens of truth is active. An easy way to manipulate variables that are used throughout multiple materials is to use a material parameter collection. This Unreal Asset allows us to create variables that can be modified via blueprint at runtime 
and that can then be accessed by any material or material function. In our case, we want to use a variable that tells us if the lens is active. Unfortunately, parameter collections only use scalar and vector parameters. However, we can use a scalar parameter and simply alternate between 0 for false and 1 for true. This will allow us to control this parameter as we would a boolean. To control this parameter, we will create two functions in a function library. Function libraries are blueprints that, well, that contain multiple functions. The upside is that functions that are created in a library can be called by another object, and it doesn't require references. In our case, we will make a function that sets our parameter based on a boolean, and a function that gets the value of our parameter as a boolean. That way we can, in the object of our choice, manipulate this parameter using only booleans and therefore eliminating the possibility of a misinput. Now then, we'll go in the character controller and for the purpose of this showcase, bind the E on the keyboard to the lens activation. So now we have a material function that creates a cone mask that follows the vision of the camera, and we have a material parameter that tells us if the lens is active or not. We will add this to the material function so that the cone stops existing if the lens is inactive. Finally, we need to add a parameter to the function that gives us control over if the mask is additive or subtractive, meaning whether the cone reveals or hides objects. We will use a simple static boolean parameter from the material itself to do so. Awesome! We can now use this material function as an opacity mask in any material that we want the lens to reveal or hide. It is important, however, to set the material blend mode to mask so that the shader allows for mask to hide objects. Thus, we have the effect of the lens of truth. Alas, it's quite unimpressive without a bit of frosting. In Ocarina of Time, there was a reddish overlay around the cone of vision. To reproduce this, we will have to create another material. However, this time, we will set its material domain to pass process. Pass process materials allows us to apply effects directly on what the player would be seeing. In order to do so, we need to take the scene texture and apply a shade of red that ignores the circle produced by the lens. To exclude the area around the circle, we'll use a formula similar to that of the cone, but only for a circle and relative to the screen. We will also make use of the scalar parameter from the collection to activate and deactivate the pass process effect just like we did in the cone. Once that's done, all we need is to add the material to the camera's pass process. We now have a somewhat convincing lens effect, but we need to build a small level to showcase the possibilities of this mechanic. To do so, we will use the geometry brushes to create a level reminiscent of the Shadow Temple. Using textures from the starter content, we will create a material that can be used on walls. We will also create an orb that appears when the player uses the lens, to showcase the ability to make stuff appear. Once we've assembled the gym, we have the perfect space to experiment with the mechanic. If you need a better look at our recipe to understand the more technical points of this video, or if you're just curious about it, you can find the project's links in the description below. So thank you for joining us in the pantry for this episode. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. If you like the content of the video or would like to see more, please consider giving us a like or subscribing. Thank you and see you in the next one.